Hello and thank you for joining me in the class today. Today we're going to be painting clouds, but not just simple clouds. We're going to be painting nice, realistic clouds. Let's say, for example, you've taken a photograph of a beautiful, majestic uh, bunch of clouds in the sky. Now you want to paint those clouds, so you want to get the likeness of those clouds. That's the kind of clouds we're going to be painting today. So let me show you the picture that I've chosen, and then we'll plan it out from there. Sorry about that delay, guys. I actually forgot to press the go live button. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway. Alrighty. So when painting clouds, there's a few things we need to look out for. The first one is the, the sky itself. So we need to get those colors right. And then after that, we're going to take a look and see the different types of clouds that you get. So to the clouds we're going to concentrate on today are the cumulus clouds because they're those nice, billowy, puffy kind of clouds that you that always look so majestic that everybody always wants to paint. So we're concentrating on those guys today. Now the way they form is that in the sky you have different layers of air. And these layers of air are at different temperatures. So when you get warm air that's rising up from a lower layer up into a cold higher layer, then that moisture that's in the air becomes a vapor. They, they collect and they become a vapor. So that's when you get the, these little clouds forming. Now, as that warm air is rising up, the moisture is collecting and vaporizing into little water droplets. So that's how you get that billowing effect. It's what you're actually seeing is the warm air that's rising and the water droplets that are then coalescing together. So what happens then is you'll, you'll find that you get billowing and then it tends to smooth out a bit. And that's because here at the bottom, the, 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 all that vaporization has already happened. So this is now just a, a, a blanket of vapor lying there. But as we go up, this is where the, the vaporizing is still happening. So all the action and the movement is here. This here tends to be quite static. So now to get your distance, you'll find that you've got billowing, going to smooth, and then billowing, going to smooth. So let's do over here, billowing, going to smooth, billowing, going to smooth, and then billowing, and so on. So you've got those little smoother bits in front of the, the puffy bits. And that's how you get those little distances. And obviously, the, the, the top bits they sticking their head out, so they're catching all the sun. And then the lower bits tend to be the darker guys because these top guys are casting a shadow on the lower ones. So you get dark against light, dark against light, and so on. Obviously, it does flip around sometimes when you've got, like, for example, in this one, the, the sky, the sun is coming from the left to the right. So here on the left hand side where it's sunlit, you've got the light against the dark. But here on the, on the um, shadow side, then you, it flips around. Then you've got the dark against the light. Alrighty, so I think let's start off by mixing some colors. So we'll go over to the palette. Alright, so the colors that we're going to use is titanium white. There's lots of white in this scene, so plenty of that we're going to need. Then for the sky, you'll find that depending on where you're looking, if you're looking high up in the sky, 
it's more of an ultramarine kind of color and you can see touches of it in the top of this uh this photo over here then as you go down it starts to look more cerulean so i've put down some cerulean and some french ultramarine then to get those gray kind of colors it's usually quite a sky kind of color but depending on the time of the day it's obviously not going to change if you've got a sunset then you're going to have more suns sunset kind of colors in the in the clouds so what i like to do is i like to mix my own gray using the three primary colors which is the french ultramarine cadmium yellow and cadmium red and the cadmium yellow then from there i'll mix up my own gray and adjust it and tweak it to be a little bit more red or a little bit more blue or a little bit more yellow or orange or whatever i need and and that gives me a nice natural color for the sky all right so let's start off by mixing that the the, the sky color so the majority color there is definitely a A cerulean blue. I think maybe I'll put on a little bit more. About like that. And let's get some white into it. Just to get the, the tonal value correct. Because at the moment you can see it's too dark. So once you've got that tonal correct value correct, it's easier to see the color variation what do we need to do to this color to get it looking correct so i'm just going to put literally can you see there rather a little bit too little paint in first let's just see what does that do a little bit of white do to the color is it making a big difference yes or no not particularly so i think we can add a bit more let's just do that Yeah, that's better now. We've got ourselves a bit of a a bit of a look. So I can see the colours not quite where it needs to be. So I'm gonna take some um ultramarine. We'll probably need some more, so I think I'm also just gonna I'll put some down over there. And let's work that in and see what we've got. Not bad, also still quite quite dark, eh? Let's get a bit more white into that. Let's just work on that tonal value first. The minute you add a new color into a mix, it's obviously going to make a difference to the tonal value because now we've added some dark ultramarine in there. So you the tonal value that we had initially has darkened up. So you've got to work that white back in there to, to adjust it. I'm going to add a bit more ultramarine into that. And then I think while I'm at it, we may as well add some uh, medium in there as well. That way then, by the time our, our color's right, is the right consistency as well. So I'll just add a few drops in there. So I'm not painting in oil today. If you're working along in acrylics, I'll, I'll do my best to explain the differences as we go. What I'm looking for here is just a, a nice creamy consistency. It mustn't be too thin or too thick. Lighten him up a bit more. I'm getting there. Okay. 
No, that's probably probably close enough. All right, so from here we're going to just lighten up. So we can literally just add more white to lighten up and some more cerulean as well as we go down because now as we go down you're looking more and more at the horizon then the color does change and it does become more a bit more cerulean Yeah, it seems all right. All right, so that gives us two sky colors that we can work with. Let's maybe put the, the lighter one there. Let's get some medium into him. If you're working in acrylics, this consistency should be fine out the tube. I'm just looking for like a mayonnaise kind of consistency. This will go on because you do have to cover nice large areas when it comes to the sky. So it can't be too thick so that you have to paste the paint on. It's got to be a nice flowing consistency, but it can't be watery, otherwise you can't put anything on top of it. Go right. Okay, so let's do that over there, just to get ourselves some space to make some more colors. All right, so to get that... Um, that neutral black or gray i'm going to take ultramarine so the the, the ballpark figures is uh four parts black two parts red and one part yellow my red is incredibly strong so i'm not going to use as much yellow or uh, not going to use as much red sorry You'll find that your, your paints do have different, it's called chroma, different strengths, tinting strengths. So you do have to just use that as a ballpark figure and adjust from there to compensate for the strength of your, your paints. So what I'll initially look for is as I do this, I'm looking at that little no man's land between the dark paint and the, and the white of the palette. I'm looking at that little no man's land there to see what color I've got. Is it blue? Is it red? Is it too green? And so on. So I can see now you can do with a little bit more red. And what I'm looking for is really quite a, a, a neutral color. If it looks purple or violet or maroon, then you need to adjust it. If it looks purple, is great, then you can add some more yellow. If it's maroon, then you know you've got too much red in it. You can add some more blue. And then if it's violet, then you can add some more red into it. So I usually first go for a purple, and then I'll add the, the yellow into it. Until he starts giving me just a slightly greeny tinge. And, and that's a nice neutral grey. So another paint tube that you can use is paint grey. So I did put that in the in the paint list for the for the class. So if you want to use your uh, paint grey, that's literally what we're mixing here. Paint grey is a is a is a bluey a bluey black. Oh, I see, that should do the trick over there. All right, so from here, now we can lighten him up and adjust him. So let's just take some white and some black and pop that in over there. And now we can see what kind of color do we have. Now I'll usually take this guy over here that I've just mixed now. And I'm going to adjust him to be equal to the darkest color that I can see in the clouds. 
The dark is dark. Then I'll make him just a little bit darker. Because as we paint, the, the color will lighten up on you a bit. Okay, that's cool over there. Now let's get some more white. Let's get a lighter version. Yeah, might as well take all of that, eh? So now we're using just less of the black. So now this color over here will will change depending on where you are in the clouds. For example, in those top clouds, you can see that it's a bit more um, like white. But as we come down, it seems to be a, a little bit more red and so on. So as we go along, we're going to be adjusting this color and then the, the very lightest one. So let's get a bit more white there. So your, for your very lightest one, you're just going to take white and whatever's left on the knife is usually enough just to get that white off white not quite white you can see against the palette the the difference let me move it up a little bit more over there can you see that's not quite white but it's pretty bright if you just put him down on its own not next to any other whites it would appear white so the reason for doing that is, is now it's giving you a little bit of white left, a little bit of tonal value left for little final highlights and sparkles, if you need them. Great, so now we need to just get some painting medium into these guys. So again, just that. My nice consistency. Just so that when you paint with it, you, you'll flow nicely off the brush, but not, not like an ink. That's too thin. Then you're not going to get. You're going to battle to mix the colors because they're going to be too sloppy. Cool, last one. So I think I'm going to be proactive and just add a little bit of medium into some neat white as well. Then we've got it. Then it's available. So let's take it that way and pop in a few, few drops there. Awesome. Just for what the heck, you know, we've got white to work with as well. Great, let's go over to the, to the canvas and let's do this. Okay, so if you are a patron, you can go and download the the reference material for this class. Um, there's the website address there, and I'll, I'll paste a link into the into the comments as well. You can go and uh, do that. So there's a PDF with the the full size. Uh, photograph after the class will add the um, the final painting to it then there's a, a tiled template so I'm working on a 16 by 12 inch canvas which is roughly 400 by 300 millimeters <laughs> millimeters not milliliters so just to get us going I have done part of this painting today because it's quite a repetitive process. So I'll do this in the class. And there's more than enough by the time I've done this. You'll know exactly how to do it. And then we've also got a, 
a full painting to, to reference from when we're done. All right, so starting with the sky, we've got, it goes dark at the top and lighter towards the bottom. So I'm going to start off with the, the darker color. Let's see if I can get us, let's go to that camera, it's closer in. And I'll put the, the palette down over there. And maybe the reference photo next to him. So needless to say, the colors that I've mixed now may not be perfectly the same as the these other colors that I've used. But that does matter. I'll show you how to work them in. So I'm going to start at the top with the darkest color. And very little paint. I'm, I'm going to put just enough paint that will cover the canvas. That's all. Nothing more than that. If you add too much, then what happens is you, you battle to, uh, to blend and mix other stuff. So that's all dark, and now we can go start taking the lighter one, and we'll put him down next to him. So at this point now I'm starting to reach those clouds. So I'm not blending anything into each other yet at this stage. Just putting them next to each other. We call, we'll blend as we go. When I come to the edge of these edges of these clouds, so the clouds themselves, you can transfer the outlines. And if you do, just transfer these edges. Just these, that where the one cloud st starts and the other one stops. Just those major little edges. If you don't need to get a perfect likeness, but you do want to work similar, then you can, you can freehand them. But today I have now just... Uh, transfer them just using standard uh, carbon paper because it's easier for you to reference when when I'm working accurate so when I get to those little outlines of mine I'm just going to work around them because each cloud is going to know it's growing so he's going to look different within seconds so it doesn't need to be perfect if you lose that edge of yours you still be close enough what you've got over there that's right, so doing that and now i think i'll work in a little bit more white as we go lower over here let's, let's work these colors into each other so now to blend them into each other i'm going to go i've ended off here at the bottom so i'm going to now blend upwards gradually upwards like this until I reach the top all in continuous horizontal mo motions and uh, without stopping I'm going to come back down again and then we'll go back up and then I'll come back down again and that's now going to give you a nice continuous shading do the same over here. I, st I stopped at the top, so I've got to start at the top here. Go down. Blend till the bottom. I work my way back up. So there are a few little misty clouds at the bottom, or at the back, which are basically clouds that have now already done their, their billowing. So to get that, the easiest way is let's just pick up a little bit of white, not cleaning the brush or anything. In actual fact, I think what I'll do is I'm going to wipe off the excess just onto my paper towel. And 
and then just pick up a little bit of dirty white not too much you don't want too much paint on the brush and I'm going to just very gentle even just using the corner of the brush or just the very tips and without absolutely no pressure super soft I'm just doing little circles as light as what I can barely touching that just just touching the tips of the the canvas If you want little areas that are maybe a little bit lighter then just pick up a little bit more paint and just repeat the process but only in the area that you want lighter then you've got lighter and darker bits inside those little the the, the misty bits of of cloud let's maybe add another one just floating along there tiny 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 amount of paint you could rather come back in with it with a another round or another layer of this but if you add too much paint initially then what happens is now you've got so much paint and it just starts smearing all over the show and then you lose all that beautiful detail yeah awesome that's fine so we'll leave that at that that gives us some detail in the back something to look at way out into the distance okay for these clouds over here i think what i'm going to do is let's see how i can rearrange things because i'm thinking of just putting down a a printout next to it then it, you've got a side-by-side -side reference but we also obviously want to have the the palette in the in the view as well maybe what i'll do is let's Let's chop the top of that guy off because we we're working with these colors here now so then then we should be all right so the brush that i'm going to use is a soft full bit so depending on the size clouds you're going to use um will depend on the 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 size full bit so what i generally try to do is these clouds depending on how how far or back zoomed in you are in the photograph these little billows are going to have general little sizes so i'm not looking at the big billows i'm looking at the little ones and i'm looking for their size so this brush is a little bit big let's look at another another one yeah that seems good he seems about the size of those billows so that's going to give me a nice natural instant rounding every single time now I'm going to start with not the pure white that's just off white that we mixed your cloud is generally white so we're going to lay down that basic white color and then we're going to bring in all the darker colors so that's quite interesting hey because in oil and acrylic we usually paint from dark through to light and today we have to do it the opposite way around in order to get a good a good natural looking cloud so what i'll do is i am using the the photo as a reference and i'm going to try and get it reasonably accurate but it doesn't need to be perfect because we know in a few seconds it's going to be different so to keep my wits about me as you can see it, it, it can get quite complex if you're trying to get a likeness so what i'll do is i'll, I'll keep my finger on the reference photo and that's why I like to work from a, a, a life-size reference photo, a full-size one. Because that makes it now easier for you to, to judge where you are in the cloud. Mm. 
but no, needless to say, you're not necessarily going to get this 100%, and that's okay. I promise you, by the time you're done, it will be so close that and nobody's ever going to see the photo next to the next to the final painting that nobody's ever going to know that you're a little bit off. So I'm creating myself a nice little silhouette there first. Yeah, so if you do get lost along the way, just use other things to, to, to guide you. For example, like here, I didn't get those, those little guys in exactly the right spot. I started putting them down too far because I, I judged them wrong. And that's fine. So what? Then you just skip that little piece because now I've got a line that I've drawn and I can see it. I'm at the end there. I can see that. So yeah, it's, it's already instantly a little bit off. It's not going to matter. All right, so now I'm going to take this. I'm going to bring it further down. Literally just blocking in this area of the canvas. There it's quite dark, so I'll, I'll leave that. We can block that in with, with neat, the, the correct color instantly. And the, the layer of paint that I'm adding here is really thin. It's just enough. Same as with the, with the sky itself. Just enough to cover the canvas. I don't want a thick layer of paint here because that's too much paint. Then when you come to the blending stage, then you've got so much paint on your brush or on the canvas that it just sloshes around and you don't get a nice blend. It doesn't do what you want it to do. So what you can actually do, if you've got, if you find you've got too much paint, you can take a clean piece of, of kitchen, your, your paper towel, your kitchen roll, and you can just wipe off that excess like this. And that way you know you've got just the ab absolute minimum amount of paint on your canvas. Great. Now it's really important that you choose the correct color. Because as you go along, these guys are at different angles. They're different positions. They have maybe different clouds casting different shadows on them. So what you need to do is look out for how dark is your dark in the area that you're working. For example, can you see that this dark here is considerably darker than that dark over there? So if I now go and just take you from my paint, let's put the, let's just chuck the canvas down in that, or the, the palette down in that corner there. If I now instantly, I'm, I'm painting this piece here, and I start with that dark there, then I, I'm going to get to here and realize, oh, you know what, this needs to be darker than that. So what you're going to do, you're going to start tucking into that into that really dark dark and then you, everything starts becoming looking dead because now you you've you've gone way past your your tonal value range that's actually inside that cloud so you now you're trying to compensate for it by overcompensating and then you lose the real lose the realism all right so let's go back to Palette over there. 
So you can see this here, it has maybe touches of the duck, but I'm rather going to start off with this guy here. It's easy for me to darken up some more. Now what you're going to do is now you're going to create the next bellows edge with your duck. In other words, you're, you're going to be doing negative painting of that edge there now. So again, I like to use just keep my finger on the spot. So you should now be able to get it reasonably accurate. Great. Now we can start working this into that. So I start with the dark and I'll gradually work my way in using light touch and just little circular motions and taps. So as you do this, again, you can use, keep your, your hand by your reference. Let's see, I've got a little edge over there. And he bellows out in that direction, there like that. Okay, so Beach Life is asking, would it be better if the undercolor was burnt sienna? Then you would see where you've painted and covered the canvas. Um, I don't like, I'm not a big fan of um, underpainting. Because I, I find that the underpainting always shines through a little bit. And I, I know that's why you, you sort of um, do, the, do the opposite color to get that vibrancy and stuff. But I don't know. I, I just find you, you lose the brightest brights. You never really fully get back to those nice brights. Yeah, I start with a white canvas. So I know I, I can always just, if I remove the paint, I've got white. But if I've not underpainted with, with, with brown, I could only paint white back. So I feel you lose vibrancy when underpainting your paintings. With the with the opposite color, like burnt sienna in this case, a lot of people like doing it. I, I just haven't had success with it, so maybe maybe I'm not doing it right. <laughs> That's a possibility. Okay, so all I'm doing is just following these little edges. Let's form that little silhouette over there. And as I'm doing this, I'm looking for the tonal value as well. I'm really trying to get the tonal value correct. So just tiny amounts of paint. And I'm just blending these guys gently into each other. Often I'll even just use my finger just to tap it like that. To get that last little bit of, of blending in. Now, if you're working in acrylic, then what you want to do is just do a little piece at a time. A little piece that's going to not dry on you. Other option is you let it dry out fully and then you just blend and, and just gently tease in these grays over that dry paint. Okay, here's another little silhouette that we need to take care of. So I'm look at his, looking at his tonal value to try and get him similar. So 
So what's nice with this paint now being wet, let's say for example, I put something down there and that's now too dark. Then all I do is just wipe off the excess on your paper towel, just to get rid of that, so that you don't go and add more too dark paint. And because that paint under there is is wet, it's not easy to just as you work over this, he's going to gradually mix with the white underneath and lighten up. And then you can just stop him at that spot, at that point where you need it. At the tonal value that you need it. If you keep working on it, he's going to keep going lighter and lighter. So this over here, let's start billowing him out. Just those little circles up and out. If you want to get inspiration for the, the action that I'm painting here, go outside and look at the clouds and you'll see a little billow up like this. Literally in these little rounded motions that we're painting in today. I like to try and when I'm painting, I like to try and just mimic nature as far as I can. It's actions, it's colors, it's, you know, everything. Because that's what's now going to give you that lovely natural effect. Okay, so can you see over here, these, these guys... They're there, but they, they're really quite light. So I'm just going to put down some color down in places just to have something to work with. Wipe off the excess. And then I'll blend these guys in until they get to the correct tonal value. Um, Bill is asking, would this be the same... In, in acrylics using the thin coats to blend. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice thin coats of paint. The, the, the less the better. You're doing, think of it as glazing. Alrighty, so now I'm going to be proactive. And I'm going to start using two brushes. One for the light and one for the dark. Because now your, your, your first one is basic, right? But after that we now need to go back to the light. So I have now initially just washed the brush. And I'm going to form the the silhouette of these billows over here. The only place that I would sometimes use quite a bit of paint is on this absolute edge over here. Because now you need to have a sharp edge. So there, there you can use a fair amount of paint if necessary. Just on the very, very edge. To make sure he's nice and sharp. Okay, let's blend him down. So that there's paint on the canvas. That the dark can blend into. That's cool. Probably about like that. And now I'm going to take a different brush. For my ducks. And you can use just 
regular bristle brushes, but I find a nice soft head brush works better. Because with the, with the bristle brushes, you tend to naturally want to press a bit harder because they're for scrubbing. Now these guys over here are not. They're more for blending. That's their job. Soft brushes for blending, hard brushes for blocking it. So this is a nice little dark area over there, so I'm blocking him in. Bringing him down. And now we can start fading these colors in. Super soft, gentle motion. If he's going too light, then just add more paint. So generally, if I do need to add more paint like that, what I'll do is I'll, I'll add it in a darker area and then work him back into the light area. So as I'm working, I'm now not going to put my finger there for a while, just so that you can try and see where I'm working. That helps you also just keep your, keep your wits about you. So generally your, your process is get your edge and blend him away. Get your edge, blend him away. And that's how you're going to get these gradual little shadings and gradings going on here. And then what you can do as well is just stand back Every now and again, just stand back. Because when you're sitting close, you, you do tend to not always get your tonal values quite correct. For example, over here, there was still too, too light. Then what I'll also do, as I'm going along, now I'm checking my colors. Now I'm going to start checking colors. So, for example, can you see this little bit of gray over here? It's not so gray. It's a little bit bluer than over there. So you're going to take a little bit of your sky color just on your dark brush. So I'm just picking up some of this lighter sky color that I used here. And I'm going to just blend him in on top of that gray. Literally, because it's going to be a shading as well. Can you see it's dark there or bluer there? And then it goes grayer. So I'm going to start him on that edge. Because what's happening is you've just got some of that because of the angle of the, the cloud. You've now got some of that sky color is reflecting inside the white cloud. White always reflects the colors around it. If you make it too dark, then you just keep working over it because now then it'll blend more and more and more into the gray and soften up. Is this process now starting to, to make sense? It's not a difficult process, it's just but it is a little bit time consuming, so you do need to be patient. Okay, let's work this down here. There is a bit of blue lying there, but it doesn't matter. We 
used to say that cloud wasn't a little bit bluer when we uh, when we took the photo. Who's going to know? <laughs> okay, let's stop at that one. And as you can see, I'm starting at the back cloud and I'm working my, my way gradually forward. Okay, so this guy goes in here and forms a little that little silhouette over there. This is reasonably a soft silhouette over there. Remember, if you feel you're getting too much paint, then it's not going to blend nicely. That tells you you've got too much paint. So then just wipe it off on your paper towel. so this piece here is going a little bit darker so i'm going to pick up just a little bit of the darker uh, color and just work some of it in there it's not fully that dark color yet but there's just a little darker area over here because this cloud is casting a shadow on this this area over here Okay, so I can see all these guys over here have that blue in it. So I'm going to instantly, I know I need quite a bit of it. So I'm going to scoop up some of this, put it one side, scoop up a little bit of blue and work it in there. And just roughly match that color. Just like that, that's good enough. Sometimes I'll just touch the... A little bit of paint onto my reference photo. As a, as a test. So Renee is saying she's already starting to see figures in the clouds. Well, that's always a good thing, eh? If you can, if you can see figures in the clouds. That's a fabulous um, way to, to build your imagination. If you battle with imagination, if you're a passi passenger in a car, just uh, zone out for a while and just look at the clouds and start looking for shapes and, and stuff. And I tell you what, it doesn't take you too long and then you start seeing all sorts of interesting figures, shapes and people and animals and creatures in the sky. Okay, so I'm just working this down over here. Yeah, while well we've got this paint on the brush, let's uh, let's work him further down into this area over here. Great. Now I can wipe off the excess. And let's see, let's take whatever paint we've got here and just gradually start working on that over there. Adding more paint is necessary to get him darker. Or working him longer working him more in to get him lighter Sheila's asking what medium do I prefer to use for oils um, the one I'm using at the moment which is which I'm actually very happy with 
Yes, let me just close the lid so I don't tip him over my painting again. <laughs> is this archival oils? Oatless Classic. So he's, I, I'm very happy with him. He's nice and, and, and can you see it's like a watery medium? And he's also got a bit of a varnish in him, so you could use him as a, as a bit of a varnish as well. They call it a painting and a glazing medium. So can you see how gentle I'm working? Really nice, gentle little dabs, taps, circles and strokes. Super soft. You know, when you think of a cloud, you're not thinking of a hard object, right? So that's always your clue to tell you to, to you, you need to work gentle as well. So here's now something interesting. Because we had that little bit of blue paint there, can you see that it, it's now made this whole uh, white very blue? And that's fine. At this stage, that's fine. Don't panic too much about that. All you're really interested in is just getting yourself a bit of a... The puffy, soft cloud look. If you can get that, you're over away. As we've seen, it's really easy to to adjust our colors. Hey guys, welcome. Okay, let's start working on the next row. So now you can, you don't be shy, go over that edge over there to make sure that you get a nice natural looking silhouette. Even though you did work him in nice and um, sharp initially, that's okay. Okay, let's work this down. So this is quite a light cloud. I think we'll bring him down quite far. Pretty much the whole, pretty much the whole cloud. Meg is asking if we're going to be adding white over it at the end. We sure are. That's why we've left ourselves that extra, that extra bit of total value. Specifically left that for ourselves so that we can add nice, beautiful little highlights and things at the end. Okay, so there it goes dark again. 
So we'll just bring this light into here. So can you see there we've now got dark and now we've got some little light puffy clouds coming into them. So what I'm going to do there is just come in until those little puffy little bits start breaking away. So let's maybe grab some of our grey. It's quite a bluey grey still. Let's bring him in. Let's bring him in further. Two over here. Let's get that silhouette going over there. And then he does come down further in this vicinity, eh? So now to get that nice little fluffy puffy breakaway clouds, now you're going to just use the tip, but this time with the white. I'm going to just gently tap that down there. When it's small, little small bits, just gently tap it down there. So what happens is it's going to mix with the, the paint that's there. And then in the dark, in the more solid bits, let's maybe do a bigger one. Let's do this guy over here. So here in the big body or the mass of that little bit of breakaway cloud is going to be lighter. But now on the edges, it will sort of fade away. So I'm not blending it, I'm just tapping it up and down little taps. Let's maybe break him off over there. Can you see that? So that little central bit. Okay, now I'll go just to the dark. Let's just break him off a little bit. I need a bit more paint to break him off further. So that central bit is the lightest. And the outside edges go darker and darker. Can you see that? And sometimes they form all sorts of funny little shapes. Again, you just use the the reference photo as your guide. To give you little ideas of these shapes and things. Let's maybe make that guy a little bit up there like that. And as you can see, every now and again, I'm wiping off any excess paint that's on the brush. I don't want to start getting more and more and more and more paint onto the canvas. It's got to be the tiniest amount of paint. Otherwise, you're not getting these nice soft blendings. They're, they're just simply not going to work. Right, so here we have here. And that's why I start from the dark and work my way into the light. Let's see here, we've got a bit of dark over here. And then he blends upwards. And then here, there's also just a little bit of an edge over there. So while I've got dark on the brush, I'll put that guy in there darker over here that's the darkest bit in this little area and then somewhere along this vicinity over here is that that guy's edge over there so now i've put that darkest in there and i don't want any more so i'm going to get rid of that excess and i'm just going to blend these guys into each other Didn't have any white paint there. <laughs> and 
The minute I see it's going too far, I wipe off that excess. Just keep wiping it off. As I can't see the live stream, so just double checking that everything is still going out okay. It's showing an area above me. All right, as long as you can see me, then everything is great. Let's continue. So as you as you get the hang of this, you'll find that you can uh, you can gradually start working a little bit faster. But I, I, I like to take my time. I put some good vibes on, and then I I paint my clouds because there's not too much hard thinking to do. You know, it's not like something that you have to figure out. Once you've got the process and you understand it, then then you simply following all these shadings, doing the one shading after the next, blending them into each other. All right, so can you see over there? I've now gone too dark. So I'm going to pick up my light, some light color on the, or the light brush, and I'm simply going to do the same thing, just bringing the light into the dark. It's not a problem. So you can absolutely blend both ways, but you'll just find that as you go, if you're blending light into dark, your light, the brush quickly darkens up and then you start getting, your highlights go darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. So you have to constantly clean your brush if you're working from light into dark. So just be careful of that. But it's it's not a problem. It just shows you that you can you can work both ways. But once you've gone from the light into the dark, you can't really go back because then it darkens it back up again. So you can only go one way from the light into the dark. And that's the reason why I paint, I put the, a, a layer of light down and then work the dark into it. So there's a few little, uh, a tiny little puffy breaker, breakaway cloud there again. Um, Christina's asking, do you use different brushes for dark and lighter values? Yes, there you go. There's my two. There's the light brush, and here's my dark brush. It just saves you from having to keep cleaning your brush every few minutes. Okay. 
And so can you see here, we've got a nice dark cloud over there. So be careful that you don't make these tonal values here too dark. So you have to work really low contrast. For these guys over here. There, also didn't have any paint yet. That's why I've been avoiding that little area there. So remember, the minute you're putting down a new layer of dark, always form yourself that little silhouette or that, that edge of the bellow in front of him. That's cool. That there's a little bit hard, so I'm just going to soften him up. Maybe there's a little piece coming in there. And obviously, as you get the hang of this, now you can start. Eventually, you know, once you, once you understand this whole process, and you've done it with, with a, a photograph painting like this a few times, then... You can actually very easily start painting clouds out of your head. All right, so, so for that guy over there, I'll maybe move that. Uh, let's move that palette up. Let's pop him down there. So remember, this was now that darkest tonal value. So now I am using that darkest guy and let's get that little silhouette going over there so now you have to work this silhouette in nice and accurate because you can't really come back into him again afterwards this is it so i'm using a little bit more paint than the normal to make sure i get this little edge looking natural just there and then coming down here on this edge of here there's also very dark over there just like that and then a little bit of darkness still needs to come in over there and that's enough of that so i'll wipe off that excess again And I'm going to go back down to the to the lighter grey, and I'll work these guys into each other. So in other words, I'm forming a shading with that light and the dark grey. Get these light edges in over here. So this is quite a busy little piece, eh? Really quite a busy piece. Lock all that in as best I can down to there without touching the grey. Yeah, that's cool. Right, so this grey runs around there. Something like that. So now it's back to those little circles. And what I'm doing as well is now I'm going to check the the what tonal value I have on the brush at the moment. Um, 
for example, at the moment I can see I've got sort of that tonal value on the brush. Now I'm going to take a look on my on my reference. Do I have that tonal value at places? Yes, I do. I've got it around there. I've got some of it around here. And then over there it's getting lighter and lighter. But down here again, here now I'm starting to have that, that tonal value again. So I'm, I'm adding those tonal values in those places as I see them. Over there is that tonal value again. Cool. So now that I've got those tonal values, now as I've gone along, it's mixed. And now I've got a different tonal value because it's got is is mixed with the white. So it's a it's a less contrasty tonal value there. So now I'm going to use him to get myself these other little these other little guys worked in. Cool. So now I'll be back to there. So now I can wipe off that excess of the of the brush, and then just do the gentle blending again to get those roundings of each little each little billow. Okay, like over there, we've got some smaller, little lighter ones coming over that, over there, like that. So I'll put down this tip gently with the lightest little tap, just blend him down. So a little lighter patching over there. So sometimes you do have to work from the light into the dark. Just sometimes. Let's see, there does seem to be a little bit of a, a darkness on that. Where these, this cloud ends. So I'm just going to work that in very ever so slightly. Maybe I didn't uh, judge the, the, the previous cloud next to it. Quite correct. Who knows? There we go. That's given us that nice little, nice little edge over there, right?
Awesome. So that's back to the light. Let's get this. So I think you've got a good feel for how we do this now, hey? Not difficult at all. Just that little bit of a process that you have to follow. Okay, let's get this dark running down here. Make sure you've got yourself a nice little edge. As I'm painting, I want you to keep looking and see where I'm painting so you can I'm purposefully not putting my finger on the on the reference photo. you to see what I see. And find the spots. Alright, so as we come down here, now things are starting to become a lot more just fluffy we, we haven't got those big billows and things anymore so now we need to start using just a little bit of a, a different technique it's not majorly different now you're literally going to be doing one continuous shading one blend into the other So I think let's just stand back for a second and that will give me a gap to, to readjust the, the camera so that I can show you that technique. So that's where we're at at the moment. Starting to look pretty nice, eh? And that now is also the the hard work is literally done now. All right, so let's go to there. Let's bring our reference back. Can you see all these guys just really just blend into each other? We don't have, we've got a few little hard edges, but generally we don't. It's just one color into the next so you can actually find that in at this point you can get away with um, painting with one brush so you do now have a bunch of little edges and areas so I'm going to put a few little darks down and, and this you can also find it, you can paint it, the whole thing in one go, if you're painting in oils. If you're painting in, in acrylics, stick with just little areas, because otherwise your paint's going to dry on you. But like here, I can just put down all these darks in their places where I see them, because they are working, all just blending into each other. The few little... Um, sharp edges that we do have it's fine you can work them in as you go ok 
Okay, so I'm just laying down a bunch of tonal values where I see them. And I'm not shy to even do little impromptu mixes. Can you see how I'm taking some of this and some of that and mixing them into each other to get an in-between color? So there, I can see that's an in-between color. So I'm going to put it down here. That in-between color is blends himself into that guy over there. And then there's quite a bit of in-between color further down, so I may as well mix up a little little bunch of that. Seeing as I'm seeing a lot of it, may as well mix up a bunch of it. And let's put it down here. So it's, it is looking crazy now, but you'll see the method to the madness in a minute. And I'm not doing any blending or nothing like that yet, just getting colors in their places. So there's a little sharp edge, so there I'm slowing down. Working on that little silhouette over there, happy with that. Let's get him sorted. It goes over there. This lighter value goes all the way down to here. This vicinity there. There's a bit of light. This guy comes around here. And where else do we have some of this in-between color around here? There. There's lighter bits. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And there's a bit of um, there's a bit of billowing upping over there, so we'll stop there. There's light, we'll stop there. We'll just bring this down. So just like that, we've really very quickly um, blocked in most of that. So Christina's asking, how can we better see mid-tone values? Um, I'm painting them so easily. Your best friend in a situation like that is a tonal chart. So this is my, my color buster. You can go and pick that up off uh, paintbasket.com forward slash tools. So yeah, on that, it's got the tonal chart. So what you can do is take a look over here and compare. Just put your tonal chart down and see. Let's say the, this, this tonal value over here. If I put this tonal chart down over here, it's too dark, too dark, too dark. It's getting better, getting better. There we go. I've got that tonal value. Is this guy over here. So now you can go over to your, to your painting in the same area or even to your palette in this and, and go and look and see which of these colors is giving me that tonal value. Maybe I'll bring that. Let's bring that palette up a little bit bigger so we can see them better. So now I'm checking. I know I need to be that, that fourth one over there. So now I'm checking it. I can hold it so it's straighter for you there like that. So I'm checking this, this color over here. Over there, too dark, too dark, too dark, too dark, too dark. It's 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 about there, so it's just a little bit too dark, eh? So now I can take my lighter guy and the darker guy, and I'll mix these two guys into each other to get something that's just a bit lighter than that, but not as light as that. And now let's check that new color that we've got. So I'm checking him. It's too dark, too dark, too dark, too dark. Yeah, there we go. That's it's sort of it's still a little bit too dark, eh? And go a bit more lighter. So I don't want to use up my pile of white, so I'm going to just put in some neat white into that. So I haven't gone, I've gone too far. Okay, let's check that new pile of ours. Too dark, too dark, too dark, too dark, too dark, getting closer, warmer, warmer. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Can you see there? Now we've got that, that fourth color over there, or that fourth tonal value. So now you know, this is my color that I need to use in. Oh, let's go back to the canvas again. 
Now I know that's the color I need to use there in my in my painting. That's his correct tonal value. So what's nice about this color buster is it's it's got a whole process on that uh, page that I that I told you. Let me add a link to that for you. There is a video that shows you how it works. It actually shows you how to mix your colors. So if you want to do color matching and stuff, uh, the, the the color buster helps you do that. And it's it, it's a learning tool. So as you use the color buster, it trains your eye to see colors better and better. So initially you use the color buster a lot. And then as you go along, you, you gradually find you're using it less and less and less because you don't need it as much. And you'll just use it for the odd little tough color. Some colors are quite tough to match. All right, so here we also just need to get ourselves a nice little edge over there on that guy. So I'm just going to fill him in quickly. So we'll do him as before. And this guy over here, we've got some bellowing happening in this vicinity. So we need to get him looking looking correct. You know, so there's a nice little edge happening over there. All right, so this guy's just paid fading away on us over there. All these other guys here, I'm uh, just going to quickly block them in. No shading or anything like that yet. Just putting down colors on the on the on the canvas, so that we don't have raw canvas anymore. Awesome. Now we can blend these colors into each other. So I'll just start at a point. So let's see over here, we do have still some bellowing. So I'm gonna pick up some, some gray and let's work him in and let's get ourselves some bellowing happening around here. And all these other guys, I'm going to just gradually work these edges into each other. There where the colors meet, I'll just work them into each other. So the, the pitfall over here, when you're doing this, is that your, your paintbrush itself is now mixing itself with all the other colors that it's coming into contact with. So here I'm mixing sort of grays or the, the mid-tone into the lighter bits so i'm going to stick everywhere where i'm seeing mid-tone into light i'm going to work them into each other here i'm not going to mix mid-tone into dark or light into dark or anything only mid-tone into light that way i know that the tonal value that i've got on my brush stays the same If you don't do that, then what happens is the um, the color on your brush gradually becomes like a mid-tone. And then everything just ends up mid-tone. And you've lost all that, all those contrasts that makes things look 3D and make things look interesting is now gone. Okay, there we need sharp edges. I'll stop there. Okay, let's run around to this vicinity. Okay. 
little billowing and stuff still happening around here. Okay, now we're going to start mixing in, say, the dark into the light, or the, the dark into the mid-tone. So that's all I'm going to do, dark into mid-tone, not dark into light, only dark into mid-tone. Nothing over there. Little circular motions. Okay, now we've got, got dark into mid-tones, or dark into lights. And as often as I do this, I'm, I'm going to add little, just little found edges as I go along. So what this has done is, oh wow, look at that. You've got the same shape over there and over there. It makes me wonder if the guy that added this onto Pixabay did a bit of uh, photoshopping to this picture. Because <laughs> that, that, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> we caught him out. So as I go, now I'm going to start adding just a few little found edges. Because we've got all that lovely shading is, is now already there. So all these clouds are gradually or, or already nicely blended into each other. So all it needs is just some details here and there. And obviously as you do this, you can now gradually get more and more accurate if you want. Just adding those few little lovely little found edges as adding all the detail we need in this kind of area here. That's actually way up over there, right? Goes like that and it just fades away. So you've got those still always got those few little Found lines, we work them in. Alrighty, let's take a look over here. Here's a nice little, nice little edge over there, right? Eh? So if you do want to use a smaller um, brush as well, just to get some smaller details on, on some of these edges, yeah, go for it. So this one, uh, I'm actually, he's, he's in, in my painting, he's working out over there. So I'm going to just leave him over there. I'm happy to move him up. That's yeah, quite all right. Blend everything out. There's another little darker bit over there. And pop him in, blend him out. Here's a lighter little area. So start with the lighter one. Make sure I get a nice little sharp edge on him.
What is important when you're doing this though is just make sure that your your canvas is nicely covered. You don't have little empty canvas bits. And the way you find that is by the, the, the paint just doesn't blend so nicely. Then you know you, you're working over dry canvas. Yeah, let's see. I think for the most part that is looking looking reasonably good there. Just here, here we need to still add some some billows and things in over there, right? Eh? Because he's now a uh, smooth bit. Cool. Here are some bellowing bits over here. They also just blends into each other. So it's not a sharp edge all the way. It starts off soft and then it gradually becomes harder and harder. And there's a little floaty bit in front of him over there and so on. All right, so now I'm going to just stand back on this area because it's it goes so quick. Now I'm going to just stand back and see, do I have little areas like this here? which are flat, too much of the same color. And then I'm going to come in and just find where did I miss tonal values. For example, there's something that's darker over there like that. Here's a little bit of a, a rounded edge over there like that. So you're using those little um, flat areas of, of, of tonal value. As your as your guide to 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 remind you what where you've missed something. There's a little bit of a darker bit, and as you go along, you'll 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 pick up these little things easier and easier and easier. Maybe there's just a little little guy over there. And so on. Okay, let's just continue this last little bit of shading in this area. Okay, so that's now really cool. Now you've got yourself a nice cloud painting happening here. So the one thing that is now missing is your final highlights. So I'm going to put us back wide for a second. Let's just go to there. Then I can adjust the camera. And we'll pop it back onto those those top clouds. Let's do that. 
and pop reference there we go I'm not going to bother with the um, the palette because now we're using literally neat white nothing else so you'd want to wash your brush or even use a different brush if you want to So I've just washed my brush and dried him off. And now you're going to pick up some of that neat white. And this neat white you can now, if you're working in oils, thin him down a little bit more. So that he lies on that previous paint. And now all you're going to do... Test that logo there for a few minutes. On these little highlights, you're going to come back in and just work in those final little highlights, just the brightest bits. So I just work them in with little taps. Because like I say, you, you want these colors now to, to lie on top of what's there already. So at this point, you really have to just remember where you, where's your sun coming from? So in this case, the sun is from the left. So you're going to put in those little highlights on the, on the very left. And as you can see, I'm putting it in in just little taps and stuff. Not everywhere. I'm using my photograph as the reference. And that's telling me where to add these little really brightest highlights. And now you're going to find that this really brings out those little bellows nicely. Because I'm putting little taps down there. Sometimes they're actually just putting down a little dot or so at a time. Here's going to be a great place to put them down because we've got that darker blue. Which we used as the highlight. So, and this step, you can easily first leave your canvas to dry. And then you do this step. Because then you won't have any mixing. Just putting it on as little dabs and taps and so on. So if you are working wet in wet a la prima like we are now, every now and again just clean up your, your brush and also just clean off the area where you've been picking up the paint because that will also now gradually start going grayer and grayer. We don't want that. We want to be working with pure whites, nice pure whites. We want, we want to get nice sparkles on these clouds to now. And then as you're doing this as well. Remember we, in the beginning, I, I said you, you've got billows at the top and then they go softer and softer towards the bottom. So you can also stand back and find that if you've got, like for example, in this area over here, if you look at this 
and you look at your reference, I've got those contrasts in there. They are there, but mine are too heavy on the painting. And that often happens with, with when you're doing this. So you can come back in with a super soft brush. So I, I often, I, I, I like to use my soft filbert. So I don't throw my old ones away. Can you see this one hasn't got a nice chisel point anymore like it's supposed to have. It's all splayed out, but it's super soft hairs. So I use that. And if I'm working on a bigger painting, then I've got this brush over here, which is just a, this is a goat hair brush, but it's super soft. Can you see how soft these hairs are? It's not when you're rubbing this on your painting. It's barely moving the, the paint around because the minute you put it on the canvas, those little um, bristles bend. So with this, you can use very gentle, even I'm holding it so light in my, my hand like this. And you can just gently come over these guys over here and they just softens up those contrasts. So it is blending, but it's a very gentle blend. Super gentle. And you do that in these little, the bottom bits, in the dark areas. That's where you can do this. This blend over here, if you find you've got too many harsh contrasts still. You see there? See, so you've still got those contrasts. They, they do belong there, but now they're just soft. And it makes it look beautifully natural like that as well. Absolutely no pressure here whatsoever. Alrighty, cool. So let's just continue with adding some more highlights on here. We do want to see some of these lovely highlights. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add just a few little flyaway guys as well. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a cloud wandering off. Let's increase the contrast on that guy. He's wandering off over there. Maybe this is a nice sharp edge over here. Lots of lots of highlights. Full sunlight. I can see there's another little lighter area over there. There's a little lighter area over there. There's a lighter area over there like that. And as before, here I'm working with absolute, the most gentle touch I can, I can muster, because this needs to lie on top of the previous paint. And this is also an opportunity where you can add little billows inside billows. So if you want to, you can come back in with a, a really small brush, just like a little fine liner, and do this. So it's really low contrast, little contrasts. And highlights and stuff that you're adding, you know. So you have to ask yourself, how much detail do I want in this painting? If you want super, super, super detailed, then you're going to spend more time on this to get these little billows inside billows. Sierra and I, thanks for joining us. So if you did enjoy this lesson, you are still enjoying this lesson, um, go take a look at my, my website. The address is uh, on the screen over there now. If you become a patron over there, you'll get access to hundreds more of my classes in oil painting, acrylic painting, watercolour, there's pencil drawing lessons, there's pastel lessons, there's Pen and ink lessons, plenty, plenty, plenty lessons, hundreds of them. So that'll give you access to all those to watch on demand as often as you want. And then it also gives you access to the, 
Download the, the PDF handouts for each class, including these live classes. Then what I also do after the live class is I go and edit the, the video down to get rid of all the transitions and so on. So that will give you access to that edited version of the class as well. So that is now a more polished version of this class and all the others. Alrighty, I think I'm going to stop here. Um, I, I will still continue adding more of these highlights in, but I, I think you've got the, the idea of how to add them. And I think we can see what the what the final painting looks like when it's completed. Norm is asking, "Am I Dutch?" Uh, Norm, I grew up in South Africa, so that's the accent that you that you're hearing. Fantastic. Let's go to there. There we go. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Nice little process and a nice relaxing process. Put yourself on some good music and off you go. Next minute you know you've got yourself a beautiful cloudscape and I promise you they are very, very popular. If you add um, just like trees and a little bit of uh, small details in, in the in the ground not too much leave the sky to do all the talking see you next time good luck with your painting so guys if you do have any questions in the live class i'm happy to uh hang around and, and answer them let me post that that link for the for the color buster again i can give you a quick sh quick peep so you can sh see what it how it works so on it you've got the the color wheel and the opposites are marked there's all your color mixing rules printed out of here this is a chromatic color wheel in other words the color wheel converted to black and white so if you're working with say for example violet you can look at the corresponding place to give you an idea instantly of its natural tonal value there's your tonal chart and then on this side this is where the magic happens this is where you you um, match your colors. So in, in the um, on the sales page, there is a, a video that shows you exactly how to use it. So here you find the color. You can isolate it using those holes over there. And then this little process with the slider gets you pretty much 90% to the, the color matched. And then you use these guys here and your color mixing rules just to do a, a final um, a final fine tuning on your on your color that you're trying to match and now you're saying you should add uh, add some birds absolutely absolutely you can't have birds that's uh, in the sky without any birds eh? So here you can see nicely how I've softened it as well, also on in that area, with the with this very soft head brush. So to get the, the color buster, let me post that link again there for you. So it is in the description below if you are watching the replay. Thanks, guys. You have yourself a wonderful weekend. Thanks for joining. I'll see you next week. Next week, we are drawing mist. Mist. It's going to be awesome in, in, in pencil. So join me for that. It's, a, it's not a difficult process, but there's a little bit of a process to it. A few little tips and tricks that I can give you. Um, yeah, I think you'll enjoy that. Uh, Debbie's asking what I use. Tiny touches of yellows and oranges. Um, 
if you're working in a sunset and so on. Yes, absolutely. Remember, um, let's go back to here. Like I did over here, I adjusted the color and added some blues in it. As you go down, you'll see maybe your whites need a bit of uh, red or yellow or orange or whatever in it. Then then do that. You, you adjust those colors as you go along to make sure that you do have the, the, the correct colors. The, the initial colors you mix are just like a... Um, think of it as, a, a, as your base colors. And then after that, you tweaking it with little extra colors impromptu mixes here and there on the palette not into the main mix just to the side just off to the side so now you've got a little bit of yellow or a little bit of pink or a little bit of blue extra into those original colors so you can always use those original colors because they are your base colors they're the ones that you mixed because they're the majority in the in the painting and then these little impromptu mixes are just little tweaks and adjustments. Maybe it's a little bit bluer to the one side, or maybe it's a little bit more redder, and so on. So then go ahead, and you do those adjustments as you go along. <laughs> and is asking, when am I going to paint a tiger? I think a tiger is probably going to be a little bit much for a life class. Um, I'd be happy to paint one of those inside the membership. Because then I'll have more hours, you know, here in the in the life class. I've only got an hour, maybe two, then, you know, then people need to wander off because of their schedules. But inside the inside the, the classes on the on the website, I, I have no time limit because you can watch them on demand as it suits your schedule. So there I go into the more more detailed stuff. So I'd be quite happy to, to do one, a tiger. What you do is go to the Have Your Say page on the website. And then you post that suggestion. And then I, I always look, whenever we're looking for class ideas, then I look in the Have Your Say page. There's the link over there for you, Anae. I look there to see what, what have you guys requested. And then I'll do those requests first before finding my own my own topics. And that's why I know I'm always doing classes that you guys enjoy and want to see. Awesome. Looks like the, the questions are done. Guys, have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. It was great fun.